what's up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is coach Coco and I love volleyball so much so my channel is filled with tips tricks hacks and anything you could ever need to know about volleyball so today I want to give you 10 things that you need to know before you start playing volleyball I know on my channel a lot we talk about when you're playing how to play what to do tips tricks all of that but I want to talk about things you need to know before especially since a lot of things are starting to clear up if you know what I mean and people are starting to think about going back into the court so let's get right into it So if you don't already know, my name is Coco and I'm here on YouTube to help you learn how to play volleyball. I've been here a long time and my channel is filled with different tips and tricks that you can use in order to become the best player that you want to be. So today I'm going to talk about 10 things that you need to know before you start playing. And number one, these are not in any particular order, but number one is super, super important. And what that is, is do not buy all of your volleyball equipment before you start playing. And let me tell you why. A lot of the time I see a lot of players who get really excited about learning how to play volleyball and then they go and they go to Dick Sporting Goods or different stores and they buy all of the volleyball equipment, the shoes, the ball, the, the jersey, the spandex, all of that just to find out that either their team is in a different color, they got the wrong shoe, the shoe doesn't work well, they don't want to play volleyball anymore, and then their parents or themselves are out of a lot of money. I highly suggest you wait until you either make the team, you find a recreational team, or if you find if it's really your thing. Now, and not everybody who plays volleyball, if they find out that it's their thing, you might like softball, you might like tennis, you might like art, you might like music, anything like that. But I highly suggest that when you first start playing, not to buy all of your equipment from the jump, because I don't want you to waste money, but at the same time, I do want you to be prepared. So if you are joining like a recreational volleyball league or something like that, then yes, invest in some volleyball shoes. But if you're wanting to become a volleyball player and you're only practicing at home right now, don't go and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on equipment yet until you know if it's your thing. Number two, not practicing before you try out for a team. So a lot of the times I see a lot of players who email me and say, hey Coco, I'm really looking forward to trying out for a team. I want to play. I'm new. I don't know anything. And I always tell them, work on your basic skills, work on your passing, your setting, your serving, your, um, your digging, your spiking, all of that kind of stuff before you get there because it gives you that foundation of knowledge that you need before you start playing on a team. And a lot of them are like, wow, I really need to know all of that before I start playing. Yes, I think that it's great to have just a foundation. Now, I'm not saying you got to go and be like Hanada or anything like that, but I think that you should have a foundation of knowledge to learn how to play. So when a coach starts working with you, they can go ahead and start building on what you are. Number three, start working on conditioning. So for those who have never played a sport before, conditioning might be a term that you might not be too familiar with. Conditioning is the art of working on your stamina endurance and i don't want to say the phrase get in shape because i think any shape can play volleyball or any sport and do anything so let's talk about working on our stamina and endurance and doing something that makes us feel good conditioning is important because on the volleyball court things can get tiring especially if you're in a long rally and you're kind of just in it and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and then you're tired and you're like oh this is going on forever. The better stamina endurance that you have, the better chance you have to perform well. So working on conditioning is extremely important. Actually on my channel, I'm gonna start doing more conditioning and health related content on Mondays, so that way we can talk about all the aspects of being a player, not just how to play, how to spike, how to serve, but how to feel good and be good while doing it. Number four, meeting the coach. We talked about this a lot. In every video when I talk about what you need to know for your volleyball team, I always talk about meeting the coach. Meeting the coach is so extremely important, especially if you're new to the game and you've never played before. By introducing yourself to the coach, it gives them the opportunity to know, number one, you're coachable, number two, you're serious, and number three, you're really looking forward to playing. It doesn't have to be something that's so nerve-wracking. You don't have to just come up and go, hi, hi coach, my, my name is Ashley, and I, you don't have to do anything like that. It can just be, Hey coach, my name is Ashley and I'm really looking forward to play. Thanks for having the tryout. Something just like that simple, short and sweet can get the coach's eye on you because you have to remember, sometimes if you go to a bigger school, you got a lot of people trying out and you know, you want to stand out in the crowd. This is why I say wear a brighter shirt. But sometimes you know, there's a lot of people trying out and you want them to notice you. Introducing yourself is something that sometimes they don't expect and it can really give you an edge lean forward. Number five, 
understanding the positions. Now I don't mean you need to know exactly the entire rotation unless you're trying out for a competitive team, but understanding positions. That means understanding what does an opposite do? What does an outside do? What does a middle blocker do? What does a libero do? Things like that. So that way when the coach is using those terms at that practice or that tryout, you don't feel overwhelmed and you're like, I don't even know what an opposite is. I don't even know what a middle blocker is. You kind of have the understanding of what those positions are and you have a better chance of knowing exactly what they're talking about. Because believe me, I've been there when the coach was at tryouts and she was like, okay, everybody get into rotation one. Everybody talk about the outside is going to do this. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't know what you even said. I want you to be able to kind of understand and recognize some of those terms. And if you want me to make a terms related video, I can do that for you next time. Number six. Make sure to watch some footage. Now, I think that watching volleyball online is a great thing to do because it can show you some of the quirks and nuances of other players, and you can kind of see some of the other players' style of play and better understand your own style of play. So whether that's watching collegiate volleyball games, professional volleyball games, or middle school and high school volleyball games, but I heed this warning. When you do watch professional or collegiate volleyball games, please don't get overwhelmed. Sometimes when we watch those kind of games, we can feel like our skills aren't good enough, or we can feel intimidated because we're like, I don't know that that well you know I want you to remember that those players also started from the beginning they were you at one point in time they put a lot of work and effort into where they are now it would may have been years of dedication years of training so don't feel like you have to strive and achieve to be that level your first year your second year heck you're even your tenth year I just want you to understand that before you start watching those games because sometimes that can happen number seven join a recreational team the YMCA is a great place to look for recreational teams or your recreational center in your area. So what you can do is you go to Google and you type in volleyball rec team near me and what that can help you do is find a place where you can learn how to get your hand on the ball and get some net time. I think it's important for everybody to get net time when they first start playing because there is no better way to learn how to play volleyball than getting in it. So I think that getting in a rec team maybe on the weekends, one day a week, is a great time for you to practice those skills that you were learning. You remember in step what step was that? In step two. So I want you to do that. Number eight, understanding the rules a little bit. So this is different than understanding the positions. When I mean understand the rules, I want you to work on what does a bump mean? Um, what, what can, how many uh, serves can I have in the net? I want you to work on all those kinds of things. Referee calls. I want you to work on what counts as in or out. What does it mean when somebody gets, um, what is a double? What is a carry? Things like that those underlying rules so that way once again when the coach is talking about things you have a better understanding number nine which is so important which is learn confidence and I mean confidence in you we have to remember that when you're trying something new it is not always gonna be easy it is not and that's with anything in life not just volleyball but anything in life it is not always easy and we have to remember that even though it's not always easy we have to keep trying and when I mean confidence I want you to be confident enough in yourself to try you don't have to be perfect. In my life, I've had times in my life where I felt like I had to be perfect and it's hindered me. And I have to say, you can't let fear hold you back. You really can't. And one of the things to do that is to start believing in yourself and take it one step at a time. Whether that's going to one practice or just showing up and watching, that's a step. Realize that every step is a step in the direction of your goals. Number 10, height does not matter. Now, some people might find this controversial and say, of course, Coco, height matters. Volleyball players are all tall. They're all tall. You have to be tall, the better, and the taller, the better. You know, some people might find that controversial, but I'm going to still say height doesn't matter because some of the greatest players I've ever played with in my life who didn't play college, who didn't play in high school, who didn't play in middle school, who didn't play for an expensive, fancy club team, they are on the shorter side, are fantastic players. And I stand by that. I think that Throughout our society, we have, I don't want to go into a huge spiel, but I feel like throughout our society, we have this uh, preconception that volleyball is, this is volleyball, and this is volleyball, and that's only volleyball, but that's not true. Volleyball is played in so many different aspects, in so many different areas, with so many different people, and I just want you to remember that even if you don't play on a school team, even if you don't play in college, even if you don't play in a traditional volleyball setting, you're still playing volleyball, and that's what this channel is about, and that's what volleyball is about. It's a great sport to play, great place to meet people, great place to meet some new friends, to socialize, to working your stamina endurance remember we're not going to say get in shape work on different things in your life 
on the court. So I think that height doesn't matter. And I also think size doesn't matter. It doesn't. I played volleyball when I was heavier, when I was fit, when I was really, really skinny at different phases of my life. And I still enjoy it the same. So I really hope that you like this video. I hope that it gave you some tips on things you should know before you start playing volleyball and you can take those tips to heart. I'm always open to video suggestions. Leave them in the comments below. And if you didn't already know, on my website, cocovolley.com, I have blog posts talking about some more volleyball topics that you can look into, especially if I haven't posted a video recently. And I'm on TikTok where I post quick tips and volleyball tricks. All right, I hope that you like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.